I'm here with Joe Rotella, and Joe, you've brought us this super cute project featuring reclaimed wood. Yeah, it's got pieces of a fence I took down at my house, and some rulers, and some metal, and... And it's, it's super cute, and of course, you filled it with mason jars, filled with art supplies, flowers, whatever you want. You could use it as a centerpiece, forks and knives at the table, like, whatever you want. You're so creative. <laughs> You're the one who made it, and you're going to show us how to make it too, it's right? It's easy to make. So this is actually a piece of redwood fence that I took down from my backyard. It has this beautiful distressing that's real, not fake, from years of being outside. Now, it was a little wider, but the edges were kind of chewed up for being a fence for 50 years. So I did a rip cut. A rip cut is when we're cutting with the grain, and okay. that's when you use the fence. So you can actually see how it would have gone right in here. Oh, and I ended so when up you talk about a fence, because not everybody knows how a table saw works, the fence is this guide, which Absolutely. is helping you create a rip cut. To give me a nice straight edge the whole run of the lumber. Okay. <clears throat> so I've got this already knocked down to the size I want. Now we want to cut across the grain, which is a cross cut. You never use a fence with the cross cut. Because? Um, you're more likely to get a kickback. Okay, well that would so, be bad. That would be bad. So we're just going to take that fence off. I am going to use a guide though, a combination of a pusher and a guide. So a cross cut is obviously you're cross cutting across the grain of the wood. Correct. Okay. So we're going to go this way and I'm just going to cut the two sides. Okay. Now what's cool is that this is connected to a vacuum, so it's going to extract all the sawdust or a big part Ooh, of it. So we don't have to wear masks or anything. And I've got to put my safety goggles on. That's what's great about these desktop tools or bench tools. They're so small and they're meant for a place where you don't want all that sawdust. Okay. I've already got the blade adjusted to just sl slightly higher than the piece of wood. We're just going to turn it on and begin. Side number one. And because of the guide, I don't have to measure or anything. They're going to be identical. Side number two. You always make woodworking look so easy. And I've already cut the long piece. It's about 10 inches long. Okay. We're ready to join this. And we're going to use an adhesive that works across lots of different materials. Do we need materials. to sand these or anything like that? Not a bit. Oh, I think I they're pretty it. smooth as is. Easy and I project. like the rustic part. Okay, so I'm just putting a bead of adhesive on the end or on this side or on Only both. Only on one side. Only on and one just side. A bead. And just a bead. You know that I'm never just using a tiny a bit of anything. little zigzag even. That's okay. Oh, it's a really fine tip. Okay. There you go. There you go. If you do the other side, we'll clamp it together. Oh, I don't. Uh, it's not going to dry too fast. Yeah. Oh, that's good to know. Okay, so I've got a bead on each side. And normally I would do one side at a time because I don't have that extra pair of hands. But since I have you, put the this side out. There you go. Let me be your personal clamp. There, there you, you go. go. Here exactly. We go. Oh, my hands are in the way, your aren't hand they? Your hands in the way. Sorry. So, and oop. now let's just tighten this clamp down. It's a little awkward. Okay, but we're using a glue that dries pretty quickly, about like 30 seconds or it something. It should set pretty well. But clamping, I think, is always like, it's a woodworking sort of best practices Absolutely. that whenever you are, you know, having wood with adhesive, you want to clamp it yep. and let it go. So and we can put it aside. Okay. Like you said, it'll dry pretty quick. I've already got one done. It's right here. See, I knew you'd have that ready to roll. It looks and fantastic. It looks like a little table. It could be for Barbies. <laughs> So we're ready now to adhere pieces to the side. Okay. I've already cut a couple of pieces. This looks like wood, but it's actually plastic. Really? You can tell because it's white on the edge. Oh, so we the color goes wood. all the way through. I so see. we'll use one of these on the side. I have a piece of metal to put on the side. I like the rusty side. Me too. And it goes and so much I with have the peeling ruler. paint that we can put up here as well. I've got to cut another piece of metal and another ruler. How about you make an embellishment to put on our metal? Yeah. And you could even glue these at the same time. I was gonna say, I'm just, I'm just gonna use my electronic cutter to get some vinyl cutting, because then we'll be able to do that. But you know. I'm gonna multitask. Is this considered a rip cut, a cross cut? This what would kind of probably cut is this? be a cross cut, but it's so tiny, you know, it doesn't matter. Oh, but so I don't, don't need. you don't even need to use your guide pusher thing? No, I'll take that mm. off. But I don't need nearly as much blade exposed. Can you see how oh, yeah. I you can lower the blade. the blade. I see that. So when you lift the safety, you can see how the blade's getting very, very low. Yep. And I'm not going to use this. At first I thought you were going to cut from the side and I was confused as to what was happening, but now I see you're just removing now, I'm just, I'm that room. guide. You know, anything you can get out of the way is good from a safety standpoint. Yes. 
So I'm so what are you measuring? It. You just you have one that you know is the right length, and so I'm you're just, just measuring, it. measuring it out. Okay. And I am going to use the same guide just to help me push the thing. Okay. But I'm not using it in terms of any kind of Oh, I of see. So you're using the pusher portion of it, but not the guide exactly. portion of it. And I'm just lining Very it up cool. with my pencil mark. So now oh, you have man. all your rulers done. So quick and easy. And now I get to cut a piece of metal. I love how aged this is. It's beautiful. Oh, I can hear that our cutting is done. I probably don't need these gloves anymore. Nope. Because, of course, when you're using super strong adhesive, you want to make sure that you protect your hands and stuff. So let me just peel this off of the mat. Or actually, I don't even need to because I believe this has been a kiss cut. So I should be able to just pull away. Yeah, the outside of it and reveal the beautiful text underneath. And I have a blade in here that cuts wood, acrylic, and metal. So I'm going to start mm. to cut the metal piece. It's going to be noisy. Okay, I'm ready, ready for it. I'm and I'm ready. using the guide there to give me a nice straight cut. Cool. <laughs> It looks, I, I can't believe that metal cut so easily. I just, I never thought that you could cut metal like that. Let's start the adhering process. You didn't glue him, uh, easy. Okay, so while you do that, I've, I've, this is a weeded piece of the vinyl, so I'm just gonna put a transfer sheet over it, and I'm gonna rub with my ever-present important tool, otherwise known as my thumb. <laughs> And that's going to just pull it up. And this is really so that we can get this script text to come off of here in one piece. Let's see if I did this correctly. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. And there you go. This is going to be a make it artsy box. Where we go? Here's a box. piece of metal. Cool. I'm not holding my I piece know. down to it here. So I can just put this anywhere I want the vinyl onto here. So let's just go ahead. And I love that I can apply this even to like a rusty piece of metal. I think that, you know, I go through the shops and I see all kinds of things that have this kind of rusted look that people are paying so much money for. And you now you know, you can take some scraps and you can do it yourself. And I'm going to clamp this cause, so I can keep working and not hold it the whole time. Okay, which is another reason that there is that best practices of always clamping things that you're gluing because you'd like to do other stuff than just hold things. Even though it sets up incredibly quickly in about 30 seconds, 30 seconds, that's time you could be well, doing other and things. It's going to depend on the material. Some might be a little bit longer. <gasps> it definitely this likes... turned out so good. You did a great job. Look at that. I Make think we'll it keep you. artsy. <laughs> I didn't do any work though, I feel like. I just you know, did all I've the fun doubts, parts. But, you know, I'm good. And let's see, if you take your hands off, how are we doing here? I think let's, he's on. Uh, <laughs> holding together, as promised, and we can add a little bit of metal, make it artsy. This was great, Joe, and totally inspiring because you always make it easy. Thanks. Thanks so much.